Hello dear ones, Father Peter John coming to you from All Saints Orthodox Church, Bloomington, Indiana. Christ is in our midst. I'm standing here in front of this tree that uh, since the day I moved here, the first time I saw this tree, it reminded me of uh, Saint Tikon of Kaluga. That's who I'm going to talk about today. Um, and he is, well, he was up until recently the only dendrite that I knew of. A dendrite as I've been talking about um, leading up to this series, a dendrite is one who lives in a tree. And so uh, today, again, I'm talking about St. Tikon of Kaluga. Now, St. Tikon, this is his icon. You can see him standing in his little tree here. See, so imagine that. Watch this. There's the tree. There's St. Tikon in the tree. I'm sorry. Um, imagine then St. Tikon. Uh, living in this tree and saying his prayers in the tree. Let's talk about how he got there. St. Tikhon was actually um, tonsured a monk in Moscow in his youth, and uh, but he had this, this love for solitude. He wanted to be alone. He wanted to be uh, prayerful <clears throat> like a hermit, right? And so he moved to this area on the uh, Veprika River that um, was a very, very dense woods. Um, and he found this giant ancient oak tree there that was all hollowed out in the middle of it and he moved in That's where he lived. That was his God-given shelter And so he spent his days and nights in prayer and fasting asceticism uh, and um, one day a certain prince came along and this prince uh, was out hunting this was the prince's property apparently and um, he saw uh, St. Tikhon there, and he demanded that he leave the property immediately. Well, at this point, the prince did something that he shouldn't have done. He raised his hand with his whip like he was going to whip St. Tikhon, at which point his hand became numb and he was unable to use it. Well, God, through this uh, occurrence, um, led the prince to repentance. He realized what he had done, and he realized that he was completely out of line. And so he repented and he apologized and he asked St. Tikhon for forgiveness. St. Tikhon forgave him and St. Tikhon prayed for him that his hand might be restored and it was. Well, at that point, the prince insisted that St. Tikhon build a monastery on this property, right? So the prince went from saying, get off my property, old man, you shouldn't be here without permission, to saying, no, not only can you be here on this property, but I want you to build a monastery, and I want it to be filled with monks, and I'm going to pay for everything. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, the way that God works? So, uh, Saint Tikhon then, this wonderful hermit who desired solitude, agreed that he would build this monastery. He did. He built a big monastery, dedicated it to the Feast of the Dormition of the Theotokos, uh, and monks came. They were drawn there. They came and they were drawn to him. And uh, he was the abbot and he served out the rest of his life at the, as the abbot of that monastery. I will say that um, the old oak that he lived in, by the way, he reposed in the year 1492 uh, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Uh, St. Tikhon reposed in 1492 uh, and that old giant ancient oak tree lasted another 400 years before it finally uh, crumbled to its um, eternal rest. So anyway, uh, I'm so excited about the this very small series on the dendrites. I've always loved St. Tikhon of Kaluga. Uh, I've always loved this tree. You can see that it's on the property. We're gonna um, build the church next to it eventually, the temple. And um, uh, I, I look forward to sharing some of these very, very unique and awe-inspiring stories of the dendrites in the coming days. Thanks be to God for all things. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be.